there are communities out there that fear the police more than they fear criminals. I think uh, many of us were horrified by some of the images that came out of Ferguson. We were horrified by seeing uh, an unarmed man with his hands over his head being confronted by an armored personnel carrier. We were horrified by seeing an unarmed man with his hands over his head being confronted by a man with a drawn assault we uh, weapon. We were horrified by images of tear gas being uh, shot into the yards of people's personal homes who were protesting. One of the fundamental things about America is dissent and the ability to dis have dissent. And it needs to be peaceful. And there needs to be repercussions for people who do not act in a peaceful way. But confronting protesters with armored personnel carriers is, is thoroughly un-American. And for 150 years, we've had rules separating the military, keeping the military out of policing affairs. But you sort of obscure that separation if you allow the police to become the military. In the 1930s, you could actually go into like a Sears hardware store and buy a fully automatic Thompson submachine gun. And they realized that the gangsters started using them during Prohibition and all the stuff that happened with them, they realized quickly that the law enforcement was outgunned. Pistols only carry six rounds and the bad guys are buying fully automatic submachine guns from a hardware store basically. Our local police departments are the front lines. This is the police department. You are violating the state-imposed curfew. You must continue to disperse peacefully, or you will be subject to arrest and or other actions. If you look at the, the recruiting videos that police departments send across the country to high schools and colleges, um, you know, a, a, an uncomfortable percentage of them are images of cops, you know, rappelling out of helicopters and tackling people and shooting things and kicking down doors. There's very little emphasis on community service um, and, you know, helping people. Uh, it's all about sort of kicking ass and taking names. Short of military squads and platoons patrolling our streets, this is why you have properly equipped law enforcement officers. These, these pieces of equipment or these weapons uh, are very deadly and if not properly trained uh, both mentally physically uh, on the capabilities of that weapon it can be misused. And I think you have to look at the totality of the circumstances and say okay in this situation is it safe to send a officer into a building with just what he usually, usually wears on patrol once they, we already know it's a highly volatile, dangerous situation. And it's not fair to the person that's trying to make a living and wants to go home every day. Right now in the United States, there's roughly an officer killed every 72 hours. So every three days, a police officer gets killed in the line of duty. You know, these are oftentimes very cash-strapped local governments. Where are they getting these arms? I'm getting them from the military. Um, and this 1033 program that we've heard a lot about has been uh, in place since the 1990s, although informally it's been going on since about the, the early 1980s. As far as overall military-grade equipment, um, you know, we don't, the state of Connecticut, as far as I know with the state police, we don't participate in the program. They call it a 1033 program. I myself had looked into the program for the town of Salisbury to get you know, vehicles, for instance, just you know, regular vehicles we could utilize during snowstorms or stuff like that. The program is not just armored vehicles, it's not just weapons. You can get generators, you can get tents, you can get clothing, you can get canteens, you can get water purifiers. There's a, anything the military uses you have access to, hypothetically, to be able to get you know, for your use. And, you know, a lot of it's sort of innocuous items like office equipment and, you know, computers and so forth. A lot of it is guns and tanks and helicopters and grenade launchers and bayonets. The program was established to help communities that couldn't afford to buy those items the military was going to discard. And you don't own the items. When you get it from the military, you basically sign for it and you use the item, but it doesn't belong to the town or the community or the state. Interestingly, I think not only has there been a convergence, I think that in some ways uh, the police have become more militaristic than the military. 
for as long as police departments have been around, they've always been a paramilitary organization. So they're not led by military commanders, but their rank structure often mimics the, the military. Um, the command and control often uh, mimics the military, some of their equipment. Whether it's a soldier or it's a police officer who's acting like a soldier doesn't make much difference. I think it's our duty as citizens to recognize that the police department has a role. And when a police officer shows up, 99% of the time it's for a distress call. Uh, they're running into the face of danger. They're there to save that person or somebody um, in an emergency. I have all the faith in our law enforcement officers, both locally and on the state level, to use any equipment that they're issued, knowing that when it's issued, it'll, uh, they'll be properly trained and ready to use it.